Hey there! Thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and we're back with some breaking LEGO Marvel superheroes news. So just today, the Spider-Man No Way Home sets were just revealed. There are three sets coming out later this year. What's very surprising and interesting to me and suggests that there will be more sets is that despite there being three No Way Home sets, only one of them is actually based off of the new movie. The other two sets are actually quote-unquote inspired by the first two MCU Spider-Man movies, namely Homecoming and Far From Home. I'm assuming that Marvel did this just to prevent spoilers cropping up in some of the many sets for the wave, which is why they basically limited it to just one set, which, I'm gonna be honest, is already pretty spoilery enough, and had the other two No Way Home sets just be featuring moments from Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. What's pretty strange though is that some of these include some pretty radical minifigures and departures from what we've seen from the prior movies, so I'm not sure if that's a hint of what will be appearing in the new film, or it's just LEGO kind of doing their own thing. Now, this highly makes me suspect that there will be a fourth or maybe even fifth future No Way Home Spider-Man set that will release after the movie actually comes out, much like how Avengers Endgame got the Hulk helicarrier drop featuring the Nano Gauntlet and Hulk in his white and black suit, which was a bit of a spoiler for the movie itself, so I'm really hoping that this is a sign that LEGO is holding off on the more spoiler-filled sets until the movie releases, and then maybe sometime next year we might actually get a set featuring some special characters that may be appearing in the movie that they just want to hide for now. And even beyond that, they revealed a brand new What If LEGO set, and there was another one revealed a while back, which I'll be discussing both of them in this video right now. So there's six sets to take a look at. Let's dive in right now and take a look. Let's kick things off with the only set out of the three that is actually featuring scenes from Spider-Man No Way Home because of course the rest of them are homage sets. This first set right here is 76185, Spider-Man at the Sanctum Workshop. $40 for 355 pieces. This includes four brand new minifigures. Spider-Man, MJ, Doctor Strange, and Wong, and yes, these are all completely brand new. What's super exciting is that these minifigures are really overhauled. Not only do we receive a brand new outfit for Spider-Man for his No Way Home variant, but we also get a brand new Doctor Strange, featuring a molded cape that actually kind of looks like it's almost custom and not really Lego. Not really sure how I feel about this in particular, but I think it's a pretty interesting piece to do. They're definitely going to use that for the future Doctor Strange sets for that movie. And we also get a new version of Wong, who seems to be in a similar outfit to what he usually wears, but with a yellow jacket over it for whatever reason. The MJ minifigure is definitely arguably the least interesting out of the bunch, featuring just reused prints for basically the whole figure, but it's nice to get a new variant for that. Now onto the set itself, this is a pretty interesting side build. It almost kind of reminds me of the original Doctor Strange movie set, which also featured a bit of the Sanctum as well as some weird tentacled monster, which at this point we don't even know if it'll even appear in the film. That being said, I do actually kind of like this build. One of my favorite features is the whole bordered tile piece that looks very magical and unique, forming the rectangular window. It actually kind of looks to me that those pieces are printed and not stickers just because of how many similar ones they are, so that's really nice to get. Although, of course, I could be wrong and it could just be a rendering trick. Still, this looks like a pretty fun playset, but definitely the highlight are the minifigures who look fantastic. Moving on, we have set number 76195, Spider-Man's Drone Duel, featuring two minifigures, Spider-Man and Vulture, 198 pieces for $20. So this claims to be inspired by Marvel Studios' Spider-Man Homecoming. Although, I am not a comics expert, but I do know that that particular black and gold variant of Spider-Man never of course appeared in the film. So, a little bit confused as to what exactly that's doing there. I don't know if this is an alternate suit that will be appearing in the No Way Home movies, or if this is just something from the comics that LEGO decided to pull in. Really not sure what exactly that's supposed to be about, but all I can say is it looks really cool, and getting the web pieces as a recolor in gold is going to be nice as well. The Vulture minifigure is all new as well, featuring a new torso print and a new design for the head and helmet, which does look quite good compared to the movie. I also like the reduced wings, and I think that these Vulture wings are among the best that they've done ever. 
The drone is, of course, pretty standard. Black and gold does look really slick as the color scheme, although, of course, I have no idea what that's even supposed to represent because it never appeared in the movie, and it certainly doesn't look Spider-Man themed with the black and gold despite being themed towards this particular outfit, so... Not sure what's going on with that, if it has anything to do with No Way Home or they're just kind of creating stuff, but with that, we can move on to the final set here, 76184 Spider-Man vs. Mysterio's Drone Attack. This is a 4 plus set for $20 with 73 pieces, featuring the long-awaited Spider-Man stealth suit, as well as a new variant of Mysterio. Unfortunately, the Nick Fury is one we've seen before, but two out of the three minifigures being new is really great for a 4 plus set. And finally, after fans clamoring for it for so long, we're getting the black and red Bosco suit for Spider-Man. This looks to have all of the fully dual molded legs and everything, so super excited to finally get this as a figure. I was kind of shocked that they never actually made this for the Far From Home sets, because it was prominently featured in the back half of the movie, and unfortunately they just used the standard suit instead for those sets, other than a black suit. So it's really cool to get this new black and red suit finally after a couple of years where we weren't sure if we were ever going to get it at all. Of course, the build is basically nothing to write home about. It's just a 4 plus set, and honestly, it kind of looks worse to me than many of the other 4 plus sets. Really just a standard police car type build and a very, very blocky drone. But now we can move on from the so-called No Way Home sets, again, guessing that there's going to be at least one, if not more, spoiler-filled sets coming out sometime next year. And then we can move on to some of the other Marvel sets. First off, we have set number 76200. Bro Thor's New Asgard. We don't officially know the US prices for these, but it comes with 265 pieces and 2 slash 3 brand new minifigures. First off, we have the Bro Thor minifigure. Love the torso print that extends the legs there. Looks very accurate compared to the movie. I'm curious if that flesh tone for the belly hanging over will match the skin tone of the minifigure though. Hoping that the quality on that figure is good because sometimes LEGO tends to suffer a bit with making flesh tones match up with the actual pieces. It's finally nice to be able to get Korg as a minifigure, and it's really nice to get him in this specialized outfit, although I do really hope that he actually appears in his more standard appearance without the Hawaiian shirt on, which is a nice touch to how he appeared in that scene, but it's kind of strange to be getting this very exclusive and special variant of Korg before getting his normal outfit, which is just his rocky appearance. Meek is basically just a minifigure head on two pieces, but I'm hoping that they'll do an actual figure for him, maybe in the future for both Korg and Meek to have in their standard battle outfits. The build itself, I know a lot of people have been complaining about it, but honestly, I really like this build. It's kind of refreshing to me to see a superhero set that's pretty accurate to the movies and isn't just based off of some made up vehicle like a drone or a truck or a mech or something. This actually looks like that scene in the movie with stuff hanging from the ceiling, and it is a pretty great depiction of that room. Of course, it's a little small, but I think they did the best they could for a set like this, and there's a lot of very interesting stickers here, featuring what appears to be a Valkyrie with arm printing. Really hope that we get that as a figure. Moving on, we have the What If sets. So the first set here was actually revealed last month, I just didn't get a chance to make the video for it because it was just kind of a one-off set, but now that we have pictures for both of the sets, I figured why not just cover it right now. So this first set right here is the 76194 Tony Stark Sakarian Iron Man. Coming with three brand new minifigures, it has Tony Stark featuring the t-shirt he wore from the original Avengers 2012 movie, a new version of Valkyrie, unfortunately not in the white suit, but I guess it makes sense because that wasn't at her part in the character arc yet, as well as the Watcher getting as a minifigure for the first time. Unfortunately, they didn't reuse the Thanos big fig head, which I feel like really would have suited this figure for a larger head like he has in the comics. That being said, if you look at the artwork at the top of the box, he does appear to have a normal sized head, so maybe this just makes sense for his MCU depiction. This is actually a pretty cool looking mech, featuring a what if scenario if Tony Stark never made it back to Earth after the events of the Avengers movie and instead made his way to Sakaar where he fought in the gladiator duels. It seems to rebuild into a race car, which I'm guessing is a feature that is going to be shown off in the episode, because it's kind of strange how LEGO would include that as an alternate build otherwise. 
That being said though, this is basically just your standard Hulkbuster build. We've seen about four or five of these already, and while it is cool looking with a very unique color scheme, you're not really seeing anything different compared to the normal Hulkbuster build, so it's just pretty standard. And the next set here is something that's also very, very familiar. So this is set number 76201, Captain Carter and the Hydra Stomper, and yeah, they're basically identical builds to the other Sakarian Iron Man set, but in green. So I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this one. It comes with 343 pieces and three new minifigures. So the reason why I'm not a huge fan of this is because I feel like the color is a little bit off just to me personally. If you look at pictures of this model in trailers, you can see it's very much supposed to be an olive green slash military colored mech. But maybe LEGO didn't want something looking like it was too military-like, so they just did it in the regular green color, which just feels a little bit off and a little bit goofy in my opinion. What is nice though is getting a stealth suit for Captain Carter, because we actually are getting the standard Captain Carter suit as part of the new Marvel collectible minifigure series, so it's pretty cool to me to actually get this as a different variant of the character, but come on LEGO, where is Captain America's stealth suit? We also get a version of Steve Rogers piloting the mech, which is nice to see, and a new version of Red Skull, who's very similar to the one last year, but instead this one has actually been given the printed Nick Fury legs, which makes this figure a little bit more special. All in all though, it's just another Hulkbuster, and getting two basically identical builds in the same wave is kind of a strange decision, at least to me personally. We'll have to wait and see if they're going to be making any more sets for Marvel this year. I think a few more might be coming that haven't been revealed, but as far as I know, these are the only sets for What If, The Infinity Saga, and Spider-Man No Way Home that haven't been revealed yet. But that sums up all these six newly revealed LEGO Marvel Super Heroes MCU inspired sets coming out just this year alone. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of these sets? Do you like them? Do you like the minifigure choices? Because I sure do. And are you excited for Spider-Man No Way Home and hopefully a more spoiler-filled set coming out in the future? Thanks all for tuning in. I'll talk to you again very soon. And as always, stay tuned to Duck Bricks for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks and bye-bye for now.